Hi, this is going to be a simple tutorial on how to repair the backlight inverter on some old Sony LCD TVs backlit by CCFL lamps. The larger TVs, like this 40 inch one, have two inverter boards, so this problem can manifest itself in two ways. You can have image, but with only half of the screen illuminated, if the malfunction is in the slave inverter, or the TV will not start at all and you will get an error code in the red LED if the problem lies in the master inverter. I'm pressing the power button now. The relay just clicked, the green light is on. And there it is, the red LED blinking the error code. As far as I know, in these models, four blinks means there's a problem with the backlight system. The first thing I'm gonna do is to check the logic supply. I'm pretty sure it works because otherwise it wouldn't light up or uh, blink the error code. 3.3 volts as expected. This is the inverter supply. It's loading because it's off, so I just turned it on again. 18 volts as expected. So the problem doesn't lie in the primary power supply, but as the error code stated in the inverter board itself. As I've said before, there is a master and a slave board. I mean, I call it master because it has the MOSFET drivers and this slave one in the picture only has half of the MOSFETs and transformers and it also has the fuses, which I'm now going to check. This last blown fuse is what provides power to the primary part. I've actually already repaired this TV once, as you can see on the first fuse is a bit bulged, but it works. The first time I had to repair it, the problem was on the secondary board. All the MOSFETs were shorted, so I've replaced them all with operated components and they're just fine now. Be very careful disconnecting the CCFL connectors, you don't want to break them or damage the insulation, remember we're talking about thousands of volts here. This image was taken from the datasheet of the original part on the board. As you can see, it's an 8 pin device. Pins 1, 2, 1, 3 are connected to source. Pins 5, 6, 7, and 8 are connected to the drain. And pin 4 is the gate. This MOSFET is being used like N channel MOSFETs typically are, with the source connected to ground, the drain connected to the load, which in this case is the transformer, and with the gate connected to the driver. Now, bear in mind this is not a professional repair, I'm just helping out a friend, the owner of the TV. And I don't have any proper MOSFETs in this package, so I'll have to improvise. It's gonna be ugly, but it will work, and it's low voltage, so it's fine. We are gonna use this TO252 package MOSFET to replace the um, original ones. It's not the same package, it will be ugly, but... On the plus side, they have a lot lower drain to source resistance, so they should dissipate less heat. The board on the right is the slave board. You can see the MOSFETs have already been replaced in the previous repair, like one year ago, and they are still going just fine. If you look at the two MOSFETs on the left, you can actually see in the first repair I ran out of 8-pin MOSFETs and I had to use another package like we're gonna do today. One way to check a MOSFET in a simple circuit like this is to put your multimeter in diode test mode and measure the internal diode of the MOSFET. If the MOSFET is good, you will measure the drop voltage of the internal equivalent diode. If the MOSFET is bad, it will usually fail as a short circuit, 
just as an example I'm gonna measure the good MOSFETs you can see the drop voltage is around half a volt and these are the broken ones as you can see they measure as a short The first step is going to be removing the old MOSFETs. Hot air is the best way to desolder these 8 pin devices, it's very fast and easy. We all know electronics are sensitive to ESD, but when the PCB is populated it's not a big risk. However, when you are handling very sensitive devices like these MOSFETs and they are not yet soldered and protected on a board, you should really use an ESD strap. You will be surprised at how easily damaged these MOSFETs are. Now we'll have to find a way to solder the new parts. Always use a good amount of good flux.
this MOSFET won't fit on the PCB like it is, so I'm gonna scrape a bit of solder mask so I can solder the drain of the MOSFET properly. Now that the drain and source pins are already properly soldered to the PCB, we need to solder the gate. I'm now applying plenty of flux on the gate pin, so it's easier to wet with solder. We just have to connect a wire from the gate of the transistor to the original pad on the PCB. And, finally, we have to replace the blown fuse.
Again, I'm not doing this for a client, so I don't care about how this looks. I just want this to work as fast as possible. So I'm going to replace the original 10 amp encapsulated fuse with a regular glass one. We're talking about 20 volts here, so there's no need for high protection ceramic fuses and stuff like that. Now I'm going to replace the inverter in its original spot. I just want to test this, so I'm not going to mount a protective cover on top of the transformers. I'm replugging the CCFL connectors now. And the connector that comes from the power supply. If you look closely, I didn't plug the connector that comes from the power supply all the way in. This means when I connected the TV, I had the same error again, I had to come back and recheck the connections. It is now connected to the main supply. Pressing the power button now. And there we go, finished.